Mike here. Uh, I'm doing a little evacuation. The robin air going. Uh, a two stage vacuum pump, 1.5 CFM, quarter horsepower, and a cheap Chinese one. I'm um, running this little uh, DC brushless compressor. Um, not much to say about it. 80 watt input power, 12 volt DC input to the board over there. Variable speed, 1700 RPM to 2900 RPM. Uh, I think it's around 2 or 2.4 um, cubic centimeters rotary compressor. Um, just kind of built a testing platform here for it. Um, recently ran it a little bit yesterday doing a um, uh, I did an oil change on this and I wanted to do a change to the, uh, the suction um, gauge up here. Um, vacuuming it down right now. Um, I have a service port on the low side. Uh, this is a section, it's a quarter inch suction line, going back. Uh, but I don't have an actual service port in the high side. It's taken up by this high side gauge right now. So I, I ought to put a T or something like that in there so I can distribute the, the vacuum pump to both the high and the low side. Right now, you know, it pulls the low side down really, really quite well. Very, very fast, very fast. Um, but uh, to do an evacuation on, you know, the high side there, it's pulling through the, you know, evaporator and it's pulling through the cap tube. So that's, that's not going to be good. It's not going to be able to pull back through the, the, uh, the compressor necessarily. Um, I'm probably going to cycle the compressor a little bit. Um, it might help matters a little bit and it's fresh oil in there, but, uh, you know, I generally when I do a vacuum on any system, I, I just cycle the, the pump on a few times after very brief periods of time. Um, just to agitate the oil a little bit, um, try to move some stuff around the system, what, what remains in there. So, uh, the, the, the system as a whole, uh, there's two coils back here. Uh, this was an, an old air conditioner. It's been reoriented. Uh, the original fan and motor has been removed. The only fan in the entire system is this computer case fan. Um, as the system is designed now, pulls air across the condensing coil, which is here, which is ducted to the evaporator coil, and fresh air can be pulled down through the top. Um, I, I could have done this a lot different, but I'm just trying to evaluate, uh, see if the compressor works. And it does. It does work. Uh, I just There are a few more things I need to do. So, um, as a testing platform, um, I... Uh, my associate that bought the compressor wanted me to work with capillary tubing, so that's what this is. It's point, uh, 0.031 inch capillary tubing. It's full 12 feet. Um, it's a very, very small displacement compressor. I'm not, I've never used cap tubing before in my life. I always use manual valves or um, TXV once or twice, modified. Um, so I started with the full, full length of 12 feet um, uh, because the, the capacity is so small. I thought, what the hell? We'll just, we'll just start, start big. We can always cut it down. Um, this is a filter dryer I uh, bought several years ago. It was fully sealed. Should have been good to go. Actually, whenever I broke the uh, broke the seal, it it uh, there was still still very much a vacuum in there. Um, and I designed the thing so that I have a service port here on the low side. I have a few places where I can break it, uh, and I can remove the compressor and do an oil change. I talked in another video about doing an oil change on this thing. And as you can see, I have a high side gauge and a low side gauge. Um, so. You know, right now I'm just hooked up to this directly with the vacuum pump directly to the machine. There's no manifold gauge set. I don't really need a manifold gauge set with this device. Um, a few things you can do with a manifold gauge set that I can't do, but um, uh, I have one if I want to use it. Um, but um, didn't see any reason to go through this the gauge set uh, when I'm ultimately going to have to go through a three or excuse me a quarter inch schrader to get to uh, to evacuate the system. Uh, the change that I did make. Um, was I used to have one of these, it's just a, a Schrader thumb tightening, you know, finger tight uh, fitting. Uh, this is temporary too, it's going to get replaced, but um, I had one of those here on the low side and being so close to the compressor, I had a ridiculous amount of flutter on the gauge. I mean, 20, 30 psi flutter, it was ridiculous. The only way I could get it to stop was by slowing the compressor down and it would, you know, kind of so it relaxed. So I uh, put a copper line in here and I pinched it so it's just just barely cracked, you know, like, like a service valve crack. Uh, so hopefully that'll take care of some of my flutter. If I have to, I'll pinch it a little more, but I, I think it's probably going to make a huge difference right there. So um, in terms of my, um, my high side, you know, uh, vacuum, it's pulling it down, but really, really quite slowly. It's, I think it's having to do everything through the cap tube, which is... Um, 
really not acceptable, but um, at this time, I'll allow it, let it run for a little while. You know, it's a very small system, uh, just to make sure I get everything out of there. And I'm going to charge it up with a few ounces of propane and uh, play with it a bit more. So, thanks for watching.